the whole world was stunned by the video of this man's rescue. He was saved by the rescue service, incredible luck and a refrigerator. That's why today we're going to take a closer look at the refrigerator on a yacht and how to ensure its smooth operation. After all, your survival may depend on it. Hello friends! Glad to have you on the channel. I'm Captain German and today's topic is technology. If you own a boat, you'll know that an essential component is a refrigerator. Refrigerator, freezer, how it is set up, and what points should be considered so that your entire system functions perfectly. Tech today, let's go. If you have a refrigerator where you just throw ice in and actually that's how your food is stored in a cold state, this video is not for you. We're gonna talk about in refrigerators with a compressor, whether it's 12 volts or 24. Well, let's take for example a 12 volt system. The 24 volt system works exactly the same way. By the way, refrigerators operating on 220 and 110 volts work the same way. The compressor has a different voltage. All right, let's take a seat now. I'll give you a basic idea of how everything functions. We won't delve into specifics. We'll discuss them when we break down the components that impact the refrigerator's efficiency. So briefly, how does a refrigerator work? You have a chamber, a container that needs to be cooled. Let's say you have a chamber at room temperature. Inside is a radiator through which the coolant flows. The coolant goes through the tubes into the compressor and there is a system of tubes that the heat carrier passes through it and the compressor controls all of this. It is done in such a way that in the chamber itself, which is at room temperature, heat is transferred to the coolant. When the cooling liquid passes through the compressor, it releases heat and the compressor in turn transfers this heat further through the fan, that is, where the compressor is located, heat is transferred to the cooling liquid. It's always hot because the temperature is taken from the camera and given out. This is very rough, but if you want to see how the Google Assistant fridge works, today's video is not about that at all. I'm doing this explanation so there is a general understanding of how it actually works. Now let's examine our compressor. Specifically, our 12-volt compressor comes with a fan. The fan plays a crucial role because when the compressor gets hot, it is the only component that expels the heat into the surrounding air. If the heat isn't removed, the compressor overheats and gets an error. You won't damage the refrigerator like this. It will just work inefficiently or it might heat up and shut down, making it hard to understand as it will perform poorly. Since you anticipate, for instance, a single cooling cycle, it will operate far less efficiently. This is because the compressor will simply overheat. Regarding the fact that it doesn't work and what error occurs, it will be visually impossible to understand. There's a chance to read the mistakes. I'll explain this later, but for now we've decided this is how it works. Additionally, the compressor includes a control module. This module evaluates the temperature at which the thermostat engages, activating and deactivating the compressor as necessary. If the compressor runs continuously, it will simply keep absorbing and releasing heat. We don't need it. We need it to strictly operate within certain temperature ranges. For this, we have a system like a thermostat before when you bought refrigerators, the thermostats were usually analog, meaning it was the same tube with gas that would turn on or off the thermostat when heated. Simply put, the contacts are either closed or open. There aren't other alternatives. If you're unsure about your refrigerator's status, just switch off your thermostat totally then your refrigerator will run continuously. 
it will run continuously without stopping. The compressor is quite a basic device. It's an electric motor that spins at a specific speed, let's say 1500 revolutions per minute. I think oh, regarding that, depending on certain conditions, it all functions internally. In oil, meaning it's a dependable system, refrigerators can last for years, decades, without issues. The compressor is a super reliable system, which is it's very unlikely that it will break, though it does happen. But before jumping to I have a broken compressor, consider there are many factors affecting its function. So you should troubleshoot everything else first, and the compressor should be the last thing to check. Let's examine the compressor's electrical circuit. The top two contacts are positive and negative. The negative connects straight to the battery. The positive typically passes through the dashboard switch, fuses, and resistors. The next one is positive, and FF is negative. Positive is positive. Here is the fan, which is the fan that cools the compressor itself, dissipating its heat. Next, C and T contacts are where the thermostat is connected. There's a crucial point here that I want to emphasize again. If you're unsure whether the thermostat is functioning, it can be removed from the network. In such a case, the compressor will run continuously. If the issue lies elsewhere and your compressor doesn't start, it's probably not the thermostat's fault. However, quite often the thermostat is the reason the fridge doesn't operate. Furthermore, the refrigerator light turns on through the magnetic relay and the reed switch, which activates when the magnet gets close to the switch itself. This whole setup is integrated into the light bulb all inside. By the way, if you have it burned, I will leave a link in the description because under our refrigerator standard boat ones, you can buy it. It costs about $70 for this one. We'll go to the market, look for it cheaper. You can solder it yourself. If you have a desire and your hands are growing, use it. But if you prefer a simple solution, just purchase it, set it up. We've already done it before, purchased it, set it up. Everything works well. Where are the compressors in the refrigerator? Usually they are located behind the back wall. In our boat, they are behind the refrigerator unit. There are two units, a freezer and a refrigerator, behind the refrigerator. To fully troubleshoot and service the system, you need to pull out the regular refrigerator. Behind it, there are long flexible hoses allowing you to pull it out and access the two compressors. They are designed so that when there's a freezer, the fan circulates air inside. For a refrigerator, it expels the heat outside through another vent. This is how air circulation functions behind refrigerators. If you lack a freezer and only have a fridge, that's fine. The fridge is designed to expel hot air. Cold air will enter naturally and the hot air will be expelled even if both units aren't working and only one is. But if only the freezer and refrigerator fail, the air won't be trapped. It will still be expelled somehow, although not very effectively. So keep this in mind for the future. Additionally, on our boat's freezer chamber, there's an extra heat extraction system. Basically, there's a circuit for the gas flow. At the very bottom, there's a plate with a small tube that helps cool down by transferring heat to the water. I accidentally read the manual. I don't know how it works, but it says this isn't an anode. I thought it was an anode, but no, it's actually a refrigerator radiator, specifically under the freezer. 
All right, let me quickly explain how you can identify and fix issues with your fridge. You'll need a standard 12 volt LED. So uh, the light emitting diode has a positive side. You connect it to the positive side of the fan and the negative side is connected to contact D. And just look at how many diodes are flashing. One blink means low voltage in the fridge. Use a tester, connect it to the positive and negative contacts, which are the first two and check the voltage supplied to the fridge. If you see two blinks, it indicates that the current to the fan exceeds one ampere, suggesting a short circuit between the positive terminal and the F contact. Just check the performance. If your LED flashes three times, Compressor start error, four times compressor overload, and five times electric overload. Basically, you only have five options, and depending on what the LED flashed, you can figure out what happened to your refrigerator. This isn't complicated. A fridge is a pretty simple system. The hard part is figuring out how much gas to add. I'll give you a quick rundown, but I don't do it myself. I call a pro who has pressure gauges since you need one to fill in the right amount of gas. You can do it using scales since the gas is dispensed from the cylinder. Connect the fittings directly, weigh your cylinder. Refer to online manuals to know the required grams in the system. Generally, I suggest that if you need to refill your fridge with gas, simply reach out to a professional who will bring the necessary pressure gauges and handle it properly. You can easily check everything else yourself. So let's get started now. So now let's check out the thermostat. It's needed so the compressor doesn't run all the time, meaning the refrigerator cools to the needed temperature. The thermostat knows it has hit the limit and automatically shuts off the compressor. Then the refrigerator warms up slowly and it turns itself back on and waits until the minimum temperature is reached. When the thermostat with gas is fully installed, it feels directly mechanical. And there is a twist. You know, it's colder or warmer, just adjusting the range between the legs. And it activates less often, more frequently as you prefer. I'm not a fan of this setup. I chose a different path. I purchased a thermostat model STC 1000. $15 is the cost involved. This is genuinely a thermostat that functions properly. It has a wide range of functions and applications for heating and cooling. For instance, it can be utilized in the fridge as a thermostat. You could create a zone where the AC turns off when the temperature hits a specific point. You can place it, for instance, in the engine compartment or on the exhaust. This way, if the exhaust overheats, it will alert you to an error. Basically, you could put it in the battery compartment, for example, if your batteries begin to overheat. So it emphasizes to you that it's not just a refrigerator thermostat. It's a thermostat you can use in many different ways. Let's examine how it functions with our cooling problems. The connection is straightforward. You provide power to the device. And you have a temperature sensor that you place inside the fridge, which acts as your sensor, and two connectors that link directly to your compressor. It's great that you can now control the refrigerator directly from the remote. Just note that the display stays on all the time, so be mindful of where you place it so it doesn't bother you. But don't worry, the red light shouldn't be an issue. And 
you can press the power button to turn your refrigerator off or on. It's very convenient if there's accessible control for thermal relays, especially with refrigerators, because they are easy to manage. If you're not using the freezer camera right now, you can switch it off by pressing the button. No need to search for the fuse, figuring out where it turns off, under which bed, or in which refrigerator. Just click on the remote control, and that's it. You should be aware that there is a specific temperature when your fridge will stop working. For instance, our freezer is adjusted to negative 5 degrees. Well, once the temperature hits negative 5, the fridge goes off, but it should come back on later. And you set the range here. I have 2 degrees when, let's say, the temperature rises by 2 degrees and becomes negative 3. It turns on for me. It cools back to its original temperature. Set any range you want and your fridge will turn on when needed. You can also add a counter and it will count cycles. However, this feature is separate and you need to purchase it separately for $10. It counts the number of times your refrigerator turns on each day. I don't need that feature. I know when it is operating and when it's not. Now let's see where to place the thermal sensor in the refrigerator. I put it under the freezer. Since it's crucial to maintain a consistent temperature in the fridge, the freezer will naturally freeze more. Hence, we need a uniform temperature, which is why I placed it on the back wall of the fridge. In the freezer section, which is a large freezer, I made some changes compared to the factory setup. At the factory, they placed the temperature sensor directly on the radiator. So it cools down the fastest and the thermal relay will turn off the freezer. As a result, you won't have the right temperature inside the freezer compartment, but rather the temperature on the radiator surface. So I adjusted the sensor slightly lower and it's not really affected by the radiator temperature. Basically, when the air cools, the thermostat kicks in to make your freezer work better you need to ensure the best thermal insulation inside. One unexpected thing to check is the water drain plug. After the freezer, there's a diaphragm pump. By the way, there are several different types of diaphragm pumps. You should know this. There's a diaphragm pump for water. This is when you have four valves. They generally work in the same way. There's an eccentric that rotates and the valves operate one after the other and, as it were, draw water. So a regular water pump contains four valves that operate sequentially. However, a gray water pump lacks valves. Instead, there is a large circular diaphragm and everything functions in a loop. These pumps are priced in the thousands. This costs approximately $300 and is connected to the refrigerator's drain when you press the button, the pump activates and clears all the contents from the freezer. So, the cork must be plugged in the freezer chamber because the cold air through this hose goes out and you just have a loss in an empty place. We inserted this tube, especially since it's a standard one from the factory. You've probably already consumed it. Just cut a bit off the champagne and seal it to keep the air in. Very often, over time, the radiator is pressed against the walls of the refrigerator. So as the engineer who helped me set up all my refrigerators told me, this is my friend from the boat here. We still know him from Panama. So, Lyod mentioned that moving the radiator a few centimeters away from the freezer chamber walls can boost its efficiency by nearly 50%. If this gap is completely removed, push the radiator against the wall, then the freezer compartment will not work as well. 
So remove the chips, place them between the freezer walls and radiator and make your freezer more efficient. That means the more efficiently you cool down and transfer heat, the less electricity your compressor uses. And here comes the next question. Consumption matters a lot. This is the biggest energy user on the boat, regularly using your electricity. The freezer and refrigerator share compressors, each using about 5 amps. 5 amps at 12 volts equals 60 watts. This is a lot. This is almost one and a half kilowatts per day if your compressors do not turn off. If you have two of these refrigerators, that's already three times a day. But let's look at it a little differently. How often does the compressor run? For instance, if you put a lot of food in the freezer, it won't shut off for a few days as it works to reach the desired temperature. This is because a large volume of liquid or food holds a lot of heat that needs to be removed and frozen. So if we take the usual method, I'm sure that about 50% of the time, that is 30 minutes out of 60 minutes, your compressor still functions. But let's consider the most optimal scenario where you don't go to the freezer in the fridge and you forgot what was there. So let's assume your refrigerator works for 20 minutes every hour, which is about a third of an hour. We multiply 60 watts by 24 hours and then divide by three since your refrigerator works for a third of each hour. This gives us 480 watts consumed per day by each unit. And this, by the way, is 40 ampere hours. If your batteries are, for example, efficient 200, then each refrigerator will consume a quarter of your total resources. So you must understand that this is a significant consumer. All right, you'll use about one kilowatt daily for two refrigerators, or just half a kilowatt if each unit is super optimized. How can you use your fridge efficiently? There are a few methods. The key is ensuring that your fridge is operational. The simplest and most efficient method is to ensure proper thermal insulation. Verify whether your door is near the freezer or fridge. This elastic band, which is in a loop, also flattens and starts to let in warm air. Where warm air enters the fridge, it always freezes there. So if you see ice on top of your freezer, it indicates that warm air is entering the freezer compartment from above. Ensure the insulation is effective. Ensure the lids fit snugly and place some foil inside to block outside airflow. Additionally, the, there are occasions when the refrigerator door might sag slightly, creating a small gap that allows hot air to enter. This is the most crucial thing to inspect. You can change the rubber bands if you manage to buy them. Honestly, I was searching for them for a long time. They are quite hard to find. Obviously, you can order them somewhere, but generally, it's rare to find them in stores. If your fridge isn't working efficiently, you can make it more efficient. Why? Because it will use more electricity. For these, you should place a 75 ohm resistor between the lower contact and the one connected to the thermostat. If you had 1500 revolutions per minute in the fridge, then you will have about 2000 revolutions per minute. Roughly speaking, you will increase the power of the fridge by 30%. If that's not enough, you can add another 75 ohms, making it a total of 150 ohms, resulting in 200 to 600 revolutions per minute for this motor. It'll work very well, but it will also consume more energy. You need to understand if you don't have sufficient freezer space to freeze food, perhaps this could be a solution. It might be a temporary fix when you need to freeze everything and then you can remove this resistance. This is a simple and effective method. By the way, our refrigerator came with a 75 ohm resistor on the leg from the factory. 
At some point it corroded and was removed, but the refrigerator continued to work. We didn't freeze much, so it worked effectively. Therefore, 75 ohms for the leg and everything will work powerfully. Well, what usually breaks in fridges? It's probably the fan. It's about $20. You can buy one that matches the voltage. They're all square and should fit, so you can easily install them in your fridge. Simply use a fan that matches the voltage you need, whether from a yacht store or a refrigerator store. The price might vary, but it's not expensive. It costs around $20 to $25 maximum, and you can replace the fan to remove heat from your compressor. What is the ideal temperature for a freezer and a refrigerator? Currently, my freezer's compressor stops when it hits minus five degrees and resumes operation when the temperature is negative three degrees, approximately two degrees in the range I've set to reactivate the compressor. In the refrigerator, I maintain it at two degrees Celsius, which is the temperature when the fridge turns off. Four degrees is when the compressor kicks back on to cool it down to two degrees. Let's take a look now. Let's see what happens to the fridge temperature when you open the door to take something out. I've got a thermometer in there, so I'll open the door, grab what I need, close it, and we'll check the temperature change inside the fridge. So as you can see here, the light isn't on, which means our compressor is currently off, not working. I entered the fridge and the temperature is changing. You can see that it has increased by about one and a half degrees in the fridge. Now the air is all mixed up there again and the temperature will drop, but still 1.5 degrees. Celsius plus is what you get every time you open your fridge. All right, folks. I hope this tech issue was helpful. I'll be making more videos like this in the future, explaining how different boat systems work, how to make them as efficient and optimal as possible, and how to save money while doing it. I hope there will be no more questions about refrigerators. If I missed anything, feel free to write in the comments. And if I made a mistake, you can correct me. And with that, our discussion comes to a close. See you in the next one. Bye. The uh, trial is underway. The judge gives the floor to the accused. What can you say in your defense? Defendant. I am a long-distance sailor and was about to go on a trip around the world. But as soon as my yacht left the harbor, I received an anonymous message that my wife was cheating on me at that moment. I turned the yacht around, returned to the harbor, took the car and drove at full speed to my home. I ran to the fifth floor of the building where we live and burst into my apartment. My wife looked at me in surprise. I looked under the bed. There was no one there. The bathroom was also empty. The only place to hide was the refrigerator. In anger, I grabbed the refrigerator and threw it out of the window of my apartment uh, judge. Yeah, I see. Now I give the floor to the victim. Sacrifice. Every morning for many years now, I have been jogging along the same route. That day, as if nothing had happened, I was calmly running past this house when suddenly a refrigerator fell on top of me. And here I sit in front of you, all beaten and broken. Judge, I heard your version. Victim, judge. And now I give the floor to the witness. Witness. Okay, I'll tell you. I'm sitting quietly in the refrigerator. 